Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. everybody and welcome back to episode 47 of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. Today is December 30th, 2019 and guys, today it is that time of year. I am so excited. Guess what we're doing? Football. We are dis- no, not <laughs> oh, football. Okay, sorry. I, look, I, I, I don't spin when I throw I was under pressure. I had to guess. <laughs> <sighs> uh, we are discussing the state of the Sanderson 2019, and I am so excited. I am Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my thoroughly head-munched co-hosts, Amy (laughs) and Jordan. Welcome, guys. I feel feel insulted somehow, but... I feel like my head should be sore or something if it's been head-munched. You've been celebrating head-munching day. I know. It's fun. And what happens every every Colossus head-munching day, guys? People die. We make make Rosie stamp her foot, and she loves it so much. She absolutely (laughs) loves it. But Rosie even did more better, on some of those, better on some of those than others. We, we got better with technique, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we probably should explain. So people who donate $5 to us at least once during the year, we send out Coloss Head Bunching Day uh, holiday cards. cards. Definitely yeah. not Christmas cards. It's Coloss Head Bunching Day. Yes. That's and the this 19th. Year, yeah, this year we got the Cosmere puppy, i.e. Rosie, to mm-hmm. do a stamp for us and... <laughs> She did not cooperate very well. And those of you who got them, some of you will have gotten better paw prints than others. <laughs> and she's got if lots pa- of fuzz, too, if which does not if, help. <laughs> if your paw print is blurry, that just means she was really, really excited to send you a message. <laughs> yeah. Next year, we might look into just doing a stamp or something. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to try and make a stamp this summer when she's got her short haircut so that it, I don't have to make her do it for each card. Oh, Doc, All right, let me try. And, Professor, okay. thank you for uh, saying the picture was amazing. Let me try and rein this back in to get the introduction out of the way. In tonight's episode, we are going to be diving in and picking apart Brandon's 2019 State of the Sanderson. We are going to talk about his announcements of ongoing projects, explanations of exactly how his process is working, and all sorts of other tidbits that he talked about. As always, be warned that there will be spoilers, especially tonight, because he talks about projects that he's currently working on writing, which means we're going to be talking about things that haven't even been written yet. Mm-hmm. You've been warned. Yes. Such warning. For those Sucks. of you who do listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube, we do want to remind you that you can listen to in- or interact uh, with the well, wow, I can speak tonight. You can listen and interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record episodes on every other Monday night starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Join us. Take an active part of the discussion. Let us know what your favorite parts of whatever we're discussing are. And just maybe even you might affect the direction of the conversation. And that will be recorded Mm -hmm. in the annals of history. So, (laughs) of course, the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. The show will, of course, continue to be free. But if you want to help us out, head over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. You can pledge a buck or two per episode. Even just that little bit really helps us out as we work to improve the show. Patrons do get immediate access to our Discord channel where you can talk about the show and a huge, a slew of other projects. I was trying to think of a word that meant a lot of things and I just couldn't <laughs> figure it out. Anyway, a slew of other topics with our other patrons because they're just awesome people. And not just because they're patrons, but because they're just awesome people and they have really cool ideas and thoughts and it's fun mm-hmm. to talk with them. It's a great community. We talk about all sorts of stuff. Um, Right now, I've seen a few discussions about Star Wars because The Mandalorian and The Rise of Skywalker are, are of course, the hot topics. Oh, have some Star Wars products come out recently? I didn't notice. (laughs) Yeah, you can have a Star Wars. Um, You will also, of course, get early access to bonus episodes. You will get exclusive access to other bonus content and just make us really, really, really happy. 
Amy might even make squeaking noises. No promises, but... <laughs> no, that was last time. <laughs> oh. I'm Actually, happy that's to every... provide squeeze. <laughs> Is that S-Q-U-E-E-Z-E -E -E or... Just double E's. Uh, S-Q-U-E-E. -E. So guys, how have y'all been? How was your holiday vacation? Did so you... I actually kept a surprise from both of you guys. What? I got Warbreaker. <gasps> I you left too. mine in the... I left mine on Mine's... my bookshelf because I didn't want to make you feel bad. So for the audio-only listeners, maybe Amy wants to clarify what... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I have a shiny leather-bound version of, of Warbreaker. Yep, it is gorgeous. It, it is so, absolutely so pretty. Bill, Bill got one as well, and he's mm -hmm. like, I had to come up and I'm like, so what? What is this? And he's Jordan. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you. The thing is, you got you saw the package before I did because it came while I was at work. Yeah. What and did I? Sitting, what did I write on the package? <laughs> you put the package in front of the television. It said, "Would you like to destroy some evil today?" And of course, the answer was yes. I just got it an afternoon my husband said, I may need to go do a long errand and I'll take the children with me. And I'm like, mm -hmm, you can do that. You can go <laughs> to where the thing is that I asked specifically for and I'm not looking closer. So, yes, you oh, can do that. Man, I am so excited. Did, did Josh know that, you know, that there's another book in your life? Which book? The, the, that, that book. <laughs> The gorgeous book. Yes. Is he oh, he bought me, in he other bought words, me the gorgeous book. Did he understand what sort of temptations he was in, <laughs> inviting into your marriage? Well, I know. We, we had lots of chats about how I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm probably going to get all the Mistborns in leather or or the Stormlight mm -hmm. or anything like that. But if I get Warbreaker, it's just one book. And it's oh, we'll, pretty. We'll talk about the Stormlight <laughs> ones later in the episode because there are discussions yes. to be had. Mm, Guys, there, there was really so, so much. As we know, Brandon <laughs> is not known as a man of few words. What? <laughs> Brandon, yeah. well, like to the point where there's a point in the, in the post where he says it's we're a thousand... Close. He said, we're a thousand words we're a thousand into the, words into the in, post, and, and, and I haven't we haven't even started. started. <laughs> and so. Yeah, it does yeah. sound like him. Story checks out. Mm. But yeah. All right. So y'all ready to dive in? Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, wait. Here. What about what's oh, going yeah. on right now? Uh, that's right. Uh, oh, Yes. Let's see. It has. Where did I put it? I put it somewhere. Oh, it's at 97. 97% is what the bar is marked at. Okay. So first off, as we record this, uh, Brandon is in the middle of a 10 to 12 hour push to complete Stormlight Book 4. He is currently finishing Book 4 right now. He is posting hourly updates on social media. So we are going to try and keep on top of those as we're recording. Jordan, do you know what the most recent one was? I do. I am here live in Brandon, Sander <laughs> Brandon Sanderson Center 2019, <laughs> and we are keeping up to date with the story. Uh, right now, <laughs> Brandon <laughs> Sanderson <laughs> has <laughs> said, okay, update, hour six, 10 scenes done, 7,000 words so far in this particular marathon. One person asked for a sign that I had reached the part I was writing. So when you read, if you see the words shameful ribbon, that was what I was working on right now. So the question <laughs> on everyone's what is mind a shameful ribbon? is what was the shameful ribbon? And Jordan, what? I think we have a new XCOM mission name. <laughs> Darn straight we do. Operation, Operation Shameful, shameful Ribble, ribbon, ribbon is underway. Uh, this makes me happy. <laughs> this makes me so happy. It's just like sitting here thinking right now. Just a few miles away, <laughs> Brandon is finishing up. And the other thing is he somebody mm -hmm. commented and they said, you know, Brandon, take time, make, make sure to take time to take care of yourself. He responded, no, no, no. For every book, I kind of do this, especially at the end where I sit and I write. I was like, so, so what you're saying is you experience the Brandon Avalanche the same way we do. <laughs> it turns out there's a shameful ribbon every single book. Honestly, did we all take a drink at the if, exact same time? That yes, we is. did. <laughs> honestly, if we truly believe, honestly, if we truly believe, there will always be a shameful ribbon in our hearts. Aww. It's not weird. That's a normal sentence. That's the same normal sentence for normal people. 
That's a normal sentence that normal people say. It totally is. Totally. Okay, so here's the other thing. He actually went ahead and divided the whole thing up into convenient chunks. Um, so I've got my notes organized that way. We're going to deviate from the script. So just, you know, if our listeners or even my other hosts get confused, if I skip over something and, or go back to something, this isn't a script. This is reminders. And so we've got it mm. sort of. So we'll, we'll, we'll jump around in our conversation. So just to give you all a heads up. So, but the, I am going to start off where he started off because we were just talking about leather bounds, and yeah. leather bounds is where he started. So, first off, mm-hmm. the Stormlight leather bounds are moving to Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Um, he is now he knew he knew that a lot of people would be kind of concerned about this, and it even took some convincing for him. Um, but Howard Taylor convinced him that Kickstarter's for books actually works out, so he's trying something new here. Um, but and apparently it was mostly for for packaging in different ways, right? That was um, the biggest it's, reason it's he did it. It's including bonus content and, and stuff like that. Yes, that too. Um, yeah. So what he's planning to do is he's planning to release it in two volumes with a slipcase, which means they're going to be somewhere between two hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars a piece. Mm-hmm. So start saving your pennies if you want all the leather yeah. bags because this is. And he said be a it was one. he was going to Kickstarter was likely to was supposed to start like in the summer i think yeah it'll probably be around summer by the time it's, it's all work, working together mm-hmm. but i'm excited because kickstarter means bonuses and he he mentioned a <laughs> few cool cool bonuses and i'm just like god this is money i already don't own so mm-hmm. thank you brandon for robbing me so in in such a wonderful way <laughs> Because I'm going to be buying this because one of the bonuses I was excited about is they're mm-hmm. considering having it where you name one order of Knights Radiant and you will get bonus stuff based around that order. And I have yeah. no idea what to choose. <laughs> well, clearly you go with soul casting because then you'll get bromes and those are real money. No, that's not. I, I don't think that's how it works, Jordan. <laughs> you might send me fire. Well, because why be a stick when you can be fire? <laughs> but I'm a stick. Mm. <sighs> I'm a stick. See, the memes, they're already starting. Indeed. Yes. But, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be... He, he, so, okay, so here's one thing. He, he was asking about the with leather bounds for the shorter Mistborn books, like with Alloy of Law and Shadows of Self and stuff like that. He listed a few possibilities. I'm curious which one y'all would have chosen. The ones he said were one volume, mm-hmm. two it's volumes with, two with a slipcase, or just two volumes done separately. I think I would have done two volumes separately because if it was inside a slipcase, I would want it to hold all of the books for it. Just because it feels like if you're going to put them inside a slipcase, I would want all of them. But then I think it's too big to fit in there. See, and my thought would be... I would want two books in a slipcase and then I'll remove the slipcase because if he sells them together in a slipcase, it will be a hundred to $150 for two books because oh, Tor has said true. that 100 is the minimum that they can do this for. Mm. And so if he does it a set of two for a hundred to 150, then I get the cheap price and I can remove the slipcase if I want. That's true. That's I, my thought. Yeah. I had thought for some reason that if it was the slipcase, or if it was split into two, then it would be, have to be two hundred no matter what. No, or, or, or I am anti slipcase. Why? Because I don't like them. You're contrary. <laughs> I just don't. You can don't remove know. the con. You can remove you can the slipcase. You, you don't have the slipcase for something else. But then I feel like I am somehow letting, like, I'm not doing You're things let, correct. Let, letting Brandon down. <laughs> no, just more like I'm just not doing it quite right or something. It just you feel like you you just you can see feel Brandon's face hovering over you, staring down disapprovingly. Well, no, I after the way he wrote it, just, the, wow. the, the way he wrote this, the, I'm now more worried about disappointing his son because apparently his son is now the gatekeeper of all the books we want. Just because his oh. son wants to wants a sequel to Arithmetist and we want it too, that doesn't mean that he's the gatekeeper. I mean, you know, Brandon made a compelling case that he's a gatekeeper, mm. so you know He didn't say gatekeeper. <laughs> he said he was an ally. He's yeah, on our I, side. Yeah, I felt the code was pretty We've clear. We've subverted here. him from the in, from not from the enemy, but from Brandon's <laughs> camp. He's one of us. 
Yeah. One Brandon's of us. Definitely one not the enemy. You could be an ally to both, right? Right? No. Oh, see? Aww. Another compelling case made. The line has been drawn. Sure we enough. We make our stand here. Hmm. We will go no further. <laughs> the arithmetist is the prize, and the goose that lays the golden egg must be destroyed. Hmm. Wait, how did I end up on this side of the conversation? I don't what know. just happened? <laughs> Um, you just I, kept going. I just, when did I, I become the bad guy in this situation? I, I didn't what? even participate in that one. That just sort of happened. Um, so you were you were talking about the there being extra goodies and stuff, and one of them mm-hmm. was that he he's might write a short story, which mm-hmm. was exciting because it could yeah, be he, he listed Wander a few Sale options. about Rissen or Horn Eater about Rock or a sequel to Sixth at the Desk, but it mm-hmm. wouldn't be about Sixth. It would be about other stuff. Yeah, but he said that th- there are some issues with doing a Sixth of the mm-hmm. Dusk sequel because that starts talking about the politics of Space Age Cosmere. Which we and, aren't supposed to know about yet. Right. Like, that's the end of the Cosmere, so. So that has to wait. Mm-hmm. At least that part. So. But, yeah. Yeah, I myself would really like either the Rock or Rissen novel mm-hmm. idea. Those would be cool. I'm sorry, well, when you say The Rock, I immediately pictured Dwayne Johnson. Rock. Well, yeah. Well, look, I want to smell what The Rock is cooking, okay? We all want to smell what The Rock is cooking. <laughs> when, st- uh. I just, do you think if I gave Brandon like a couple of packs of magic cards to, to mm-hmm. get him to put that in one of the books that he would do it? <sighs> I don't know. Okay. You have to find some good cards, probably. Speaking of magic cards, can I tell my story? Because this is this yes. was one of my favorite things. Go right ahead. Okay, guys, mm-hmm. this is one of my you know miniature claims to fame is that years ago when Howard Taylor released his first um com- his first hard copy of of Slock Mercenary, mm-hmm. I went to the first few shipping parties, and Brandon, being a friend of Howard's and having written the foreword to the second book was actually there and sort of helping out around there. But it was funny. He had a, this was before Wheel of Time. This was, you know, back when it was like just Elantris and the first two Mistborns, I think. Maybe even mm-hmm. just the first Mistborn at the time. Uh, no, I think it was the first two. Anyway, um, there were people, of course, who were wanting to buy books from him. And he, he would sell them for cash, but he didn't have a way to do credit cards. And people, but, and people were just like, oh, but I really want to... You know, I, I don't have cash on me, but I really want to get a book. And so he, he, he said, and this is a sign of exactly how big of an addict brand it is. <laughs> he said, what you can do is you go over to the counter because the shipping party was actually at Dragon's Keep, which is a, a game store. Uh, local it's, a, to it's a local game and comic book store. Mm-hmm. He said, you go over there and you buy a couple of magic booster packs. <laughs> You bring them over. You can use. You can buy that with your credit card. Come over. You trade them to me. I'll swap you a book for two magic packs. <laughs> oh man, that's cheap too, isn't it? No, because well, they were about eight bucks a piece, and the books oh. were about fifteen bucks. And so, okay, I guess I don't buy that many magic cards, so I don't know. But yeah, it, it was just like okay, that that's is, hilarious. That, well, I mean, it's also a clever solution because mm-hmm. he's like, I mean. If you spend the money, I'm going to buy magic packs anyway. So, so I well may just, as well just go. May as well just cut, cut out the middleman. Middle <laughs> let's <laughs> let's not avoid what this really is: the fact that Brandon is clearly evading taxes. <laughs> was it a it. was it an attempted tax evasion or was it a cry for help? I don't <laughs> look. I, I it's not my job to manage his taxes. It's just my all I'm job. saying is. All I'm saying is back then he was just swapping books for a couple packs. Now he's writing entire books for magic. Yeah, it's... Mm-hmm. You know, Magic the Gathering books. He has so, a problem. You, yeah, and and only we can save him, so... Yeah, so keep buying. <laughs> buy his books. Yeah, his and books. the only buy way to save him, is to, buy him is to buy him more magic packs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someday I will see him at a convention and play a round or two with him. And lose horribly because I have I haven't played Magic since vanilla, so <laughs> it's been a while since I've played and I was never that good. Mm-hmm. So th- mm-hmm. we were talking about these surveys. If you're interested in answering themselves, you can actually go to the BrandonSanderson.com. The 2019 State of the Sanderson post at BrandonSanderson.com. Mm-hmm. And you really and should they're, answer they're actually it because embedded he wants in the post. It. Because he, yes. he has that, he has questions about that as well as 
about how signings we'll, should yeah, go. We'll get to that. Though. Okay. So. Um, Which is. It's the next actually, thing on your. Actually, thing. it is the next thing. So let, we'll yes. get to that right now. <laughs> right now. <Yay>. Yeah. <laughs> so, Amy, why don't you tell us what's going on? So, I don't go to signings like hardly ever, usually because I don't plan ahead to get babysitters. But I went to them way before I had children. And he has four different options that he's come up with to change how his signings are going to go because they're wearing him out. For, yeah. Yeah. First, let's explain kind of how things have been going. Because mm. if you have ever been to a Brandon Sanderson signing, they take about seven or eight hours. He ends up going home about two or three in the morning. It's kind of ridiculous. Clearly, we don't want him to just drop dead in the middle of a signing. <laughs> because be then bad. we wouldn't get any more books and we're entirely selfish. That we just honestly, we want him to be okay. Yeah. And um, and so unfortunately, he's listed four options and I don't really like any of them. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah. So do you want me to to read? Go for it. What you have there. So he has option one with Brandon as maybe Isaac coming to, um, and they speak and present for about. You have just TH hours. TH a couple hours. hours. TH hours, obviously. Yeah, so for a couple hours, three hours, three mm-hmm. hours. And then everybody gets a copy of the new book and it's pre-signed and the um, it's held in a theater or other location with seating rather than a bookstore. And you get a ticket, including your signed book and a guaranteed seat. Additional seats for family members or friends available at a much cheaper price, though these wouldn't include a book. Mm-hmm. Um, option two is the same as the first one, except the presentation is around two hours. And then ten pe- 100 people are chosen randomly before the event with notification coming to you early if, you've, if you're chosen. I'm guessing that was a lottery, right? Was that a lottery? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lottery. And it's supposed to be any, any price range can be in the lottery. Um, exactly. And they can come up afterward and meet him, get a picture, have their book, and one other personalized. If you are chosen, you can bring one other person with you and you may give one, or, one of your two personalizations to them. You may also bring your other books and get them signed but not personalized. Um, and then option three, he does no presentations and just signs with no seating. And that's likely held at the bookstore itself. No personalizations, pictures, or questions, but also no limit on the number of books you can get signed. It's very quick. Staff keep you moving. So everyone gets done in about four or five hours, which is better than the seven or eight. Um, and then he has the other option of if these are, you know, saying that you don't like any of them. So... That yeah, you probably says, wouldn't if, go to signings. If these are the only options, I'd probably choose not to come to the signing. No, no offense. No offense. Yeah. So, I mean, that would give him the, you know, by signing, saying that when you're saying, please come up with other options because I don't like these. Yeah. Um, I've, yeah. I don't know. I've like, bounced around back and forth amongst all of these. I don't like the first one because I don't want to just have a pre and present and no, and no signing. Mm. Um, I like Word of Brandon's. You know, I like going through the, the, the word of Brandon moments and they come from these signings. Yeah. And so mm. of all these, I think the hybrid one where he does a hundred, like even if a hundred people with a lottery, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's, there's still a chance, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the last one feels a little too much just like churning you through a line and that. Yeah. The last one really is like basically those. what it is now minus all the good parts. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so it's Brandon's whole thing uh, with the word of Brandon is part of the character of being a Brandon fan. And I would hate mm-hmm. to lose it. Yeah. yeah. The, the other, but the thing that I do like about that one is cause it's something that he currently has is you can't get personalizations and stuff, but you can get as many books as you want signed. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that other people would be able to get their books signed at all other than those hundred. And so it's just, yeah. I mean, I guess if you order from his store, he does sign those. But Those are signed, yeah. It's just, and, and he brandalizes wherever he goes, so. Mm-hmm. But then it's it's not personal. And I mean, you might want to explain all the what that is. Pers- okay, <laughs> Brandal- Brand- <laughs> brandalizing, whenever Brandon goes into a bookstore or, or through an airport bookstore or anything like that, he finds copies of his books and he signs them stealthily. Like he, he actually tries to do it without people seeing him. Although and at this sometimes, point, sometimes at this point the they expect notice. him. What was at it? He point- had a he had a recent post where he was I think he was at a Barnes and Noble and he was signing some and then one of the employees is like, Oh, do you want to go sign at the wall? And he's like, What wall? And he looks and there's like an entire wall. It's yep. just covered with 
Well, it was, the, it was this hometown yeah. store. <laughs> it's more, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. So it's just but, like uh, the wall. Like it's that's amazing. that's when you know you've made it. Mm-hmm. Is when there's a wall. <laughs> there's a wall there. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that's the wall we like. Um, and I actually commented on that, and he responded like in full sentences and stuff. It was cool. Mm. I don't remember what I said, but it was it was. But it's magical. always nice to get. It real was magical. So. <laughs> it was a magical moment. It was absolutely this magical. This magic moment. This magic moment. moment. Hey, we're on the hour. Do we have an update? Ooh, Keep an me, eye out. Yeah, I'll, don't worry. <laughs> I'm I'm here live in the Brandon Sanderson Center. Don't worry. <laughs> well, Jordan will Brandon, keep us updated. Brandon Watch 2019. <laughs> You can trust me. I've got this. Okay, so yes, basically this last year, it looks like he's basically been working on Stormlight and touring and then Stormlight and then touring and then Stormlight. And, start, and he did and Starsight at the very Stormlight. beginning. Well, he yeah. did Starsight at the Yes. Starsight at the beginning. But he did a lot um, of trips this year. And, 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 and that's actually, he got started on Stormlight a little bit later than he was hoping to. Because he was doing Starsight Revisions. Because revisions. he was doing Starsight Revisions. And then he just started churning. Mm-hmm. And now he is in so the, on the stretch. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and now oh. he has so many other things to work on. So th- I know. Guys, we're getting Stormlight, next, Stormlight 4 next year, and I'm excited. Oh, I'm there's just, so much squeeing for me. I'm just basking in the happiness of it. But not only that. that. Um, he's ex- he's expecting a 2023 release for Stormlight 5, which is the conclusion of the first arc of the it's Stormlight gonna be Archive. so big. Now, that said, he said that in Book 4, this has got one of the, like, crucial hinge scenes that he's been wanting to do since the beginning of the series. Oh, yeah. I and so I'm just, that. And so it's just sort of like, okay. What's in the box? Here go. What's Big in things the are box? happening. <laughs> Let it begin. <laughs> Let it begin. <laughs> oh, gosh. But yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited for this one. I am um, really glad that he's doing, he's doing a couple books, or he's hoping to do at least write two books next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's trying to get Stormlight 4, or 3, Stormlight 3 written and Wax you and mean, Wayne you mean, 4. You mean, you mean Wax and Wayne what you mean? No, Skyward. S- Skyward. Skyward. I was three. like, we just said Skyward that. three and Wax and Wayne four. <laughs> yes. Skyward Stormlight, they're all the same, right? Yeah, yeah, it's all, they it's are. all good. That's science. Spaceships, <laughs> magic. You know, it's all good. Exactly. But then Stormlight five. He's writing that in twenty twenty two is the plan. Because mm-hmm. he needs and... to give himself like a three year break in between, which I can respect. Well, That's, it's not a three-year break in between. It's, it's just three years, years between, between publications. Oh, okay. He usually gives Sorry. himself about a year. About a year to do other things, yeah. No, no, two years. Yeah, two years. Yeah. Time a couple will pass. Years. <laughs> Time keeps on slipping into the future. Something like that. Yeah, that's mm. right. <laughs> I pulled out a 90s Green Day reference. <laughs> and, like, I could almost hear the tune, but not quite. And that's okay. I'll find it later. No, that day. wasn't Green Day, was yeah, it? Yeah, I'm like, sorry. Green Day, no. No, th- I sorry. I mixed that up in my head because there was another Green Day song that are my... I was, in, I was my senior year of high school when that, when that was big, and that was one of the things on the back of our shirt, and I can't remember what the other one was, but it was a Green Day piece. Anyway. You're doing songs, great. Songs, yes. I am doing great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Skyward, he's planning to finish book three, writing it... Um, in the second half of next year and mm-hmm. release it in 2021. And then the conclusion for that, I think he's planning on coming out in 2022. Mm. I, I don't remember him mentioning that as much. He was Skyward four conclusion 2022. It's in the projected schedule. Okay. Okay. Um, so. And then he's, he said, Miss born wax and Wayne four is going to be yeah, right so around the same time. It sounds like he's probably going to do Skyward three first. Yeah, he and said he, he wasn't sure yet. He, with, right, he's not sure. He There's all sorts it. of question marks throughout the throughout that schedule, but that's kind of his plan. Mm-hmm. Um, that's okay. He can he can yeah. do either one. So those are the major things that he's going to be working on, particularly next year, and then all sorts of secondary things. So what do y'all know mm-hmm. about Dark One? I finally read the little pictures 
I clicked mm-hmm. on or the, or wait, no, it was the that was the other thing. No, he, that he had the, some. Was that dark he had one? some pictures there. Yeah, that was the comic. Uh-huh. Yeah, that one is someone finds out they're supposed to be the dark one, like the the dark the evil one of overlord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and they're just a normal person. Yeah, Jordan they, or, or not Jordan, uh, Brandon. You know, because I get Brandon and Jordan mixed up all the time. <laughs> We're very Obviously. similar. It's understandable. <laughs> Obviously, Brandon Sanderson lives in my basement. Actually, that makes me sound like a creepy serial killer, so we're not going to say that. I no, am not no, a no, serial no. killer. No, that's Dan Well. Oh, sorry. I'm crossing the memes. Anyway. <laughs> but um, yeah, the way he described it is Harry Potter from Voldemort's point of view. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or if Harry hope- was Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully less of it. Which, joke. what could be wrong with that? And so the other thing that's really cool about it, though, because it's going to be a graphic novel, but they're also working to make it a TV show. And Mm. the creator of Babylon 5 is connected to this TV show. I'm like, I never watched Babylon 5, but I keep hearing all these great things about it. So I'm just like, if it's something so iconic, I'm intrigued. Yeah, I I never got into Babylon 5 either. I feel like I probably should try and find it. I feel it, like but... there was a geek war between fans of Babylon 5 and fans of Deep Space Nine, and I was heart, like, fully on the, the DS9 train, so. Whereas I was like, Star Wars? What? So, yes. Did you say what was I... a question mark? Because I feel like you should say that with a little more <laughs> conviction. <laughs> I don't know. I'm questioning the other things. Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And then what? What about everything else? So, I, yeah, yeah I, was, so... I was Star Wars and anime. Apparently, this is a, you know, it was going to be a YA novel. It was originally going to be in the Cosmere, but Brandon likes to pick and choose and take things out of the Cosmere that aren't anymore. Jordan's mm. fairly certain that the Rhythmatist falls into this game. It does. <laughs> Look, the Rhythmatist is clearly it, yeah. a Cosmere book, and everyone is sniffing glue. I think Jordan <laughs> just wanted to write our, write about uh, real-time strategy games. Hmm. I just Look, that's what it is. Look, there is definitely a shard named like geometry on that planet. <laughs> it just Logic. so ha- happens to be, you know, the same name is like somewhat Earth. <laughs> the United Isles of America. Uh, yeah. Those I just know I'd have a really hard time on that planet because I can't I can't stand the touch of chalk at all. I wouldn't make it as a I thought you were going to say I can't stand the touch of chocolate. I hate chocolate. Oh, chocolate. It gets I everywhere. Chocolate. And it just is <laughs> so tasty. Mm, uh, chocolate. Speaking of tasty, Death by Pizza is no longer <laughs> about pizza. It's now Songs of the Dead. It's about metal music. <laughs> Apparently. Which is kind of awesome. Yeah, so he's working on revisions. He's got the second draft done, but apparently it's kind of stalled at him. And you know what? In my opinion, it can wait and be stalled at him for a long time because he's writing okay. other things. Thank you very much. It's okay. More important. <laughs> so, and it, it seems it seems like it's it's one where they're like passing the drafts back and forth between them. It's not like they're in collaborating in the same room very often. It seems like they mail their draft off to each other or email mm-hmm. it or whatever. Yeah, and just get to it when they can. Mm-hmm. And Again, so do as you want. It's just fine. We can wait. Yep. 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 Um. Let's see. There was. Yeah, I need else. lost oh, the, metal. Okay, so the original. I'm intrigued by this the the concept because I think it had something to do with cloning. And I don't it, remember hearing what the plot was at all. Yeah, I'm, it's interesting because he co-authored it with Mary Robinette Kowal, one of his co-hosts mm-hmm. on uh, his writing podcast. excuses. And so, but the the thing that's interesting is that they're releasing it as an audio original. Now, I don't know if that means they're going like. Um, graphic audio type stuff where it's sort of a production mm-hmm. or if they're just doing going straight to an audio book but I feel like just doing an audio book without a book just feels weird yeah like there's something feels off about that for me but I'm not sure now if it is just going straight to a graphic audio production that makes sense and I think that I could be kind of cool she's done or, a couple other audio things hasn't she Oh, she's I'm, a she's she actually reads uh she, like as a side business. She, that's right. She does she's a lot a, of those a... books readings. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I keep wanting to say voice actor, but that's list. not the term I'm looking actually. Well, it, wanting. Actually, it is. Oh, it is. is? It? I, yeah, because I think actor. there's different different ways of being a voice actor. Because there's mm. people who do like TV shows. She reads and cartoons, audiobooks. and then there's, and then there's an also narrator. audio audio book narrator. There's a reason mm-hmm. she's the voice of their podcast at the beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And so, I don't know. All I know is I want to pretend that it's actually just like a radio, uh, just drama that they're doing. <laughs> and I just want to imagine a, uh, like a 1920 sports reporter type. Oh, yeah, well, that's what they're going to do. Give them, give them the old hullabaloo. <laughs> wow. That was pretty good. Audio program is so good. It's like you're there. That's what it is. That's the frog mm. pants thing. Yeah. Anyway, um, so Elantris, Warbreaker, and The Rhythmatist. Unfortunately, all three of those are sequels that I want, and all three of them are kind of in a holding pattern. Though um, apparently his son is, is poking you about Rhythmatist. Yes, and I and I support this this boy. <laughs> um, but basically, they won't happen until after Wax and Wayne 4, which means he's not writing them until at least 2021. Yeah. He's the hero we need. <sighs> I mean, that, that means he's not writing them until at least a year. Okay, so hopefully those will be high up on the slot by that point. Yeah. And, and then, then after I didn't he realize, does that, then he can I didn't do realize it. this was happening, but he's work, He's outlining a uh, sequel set of, uh, <gasps> That's right. of White Sand books. And he's going to be on Dark Side, right? What? That's what it's called? Yes, it's going to be on Dark Side, and Isaac is laying this out. So mm-hmm. that so should could be, be interesting. Because you know, Isaac knows Brandon's storytelling. Yes. You know, Isaac works directly with him. And his art is good. So yes. And he's and he's just a really nice guy. Like he was going mm-hmm. through and liking everybody's posts on Cosmere Inktober and stuff. He liked and... my post. It was so exciting. Because my, my drawings Senpai were really not me. that amazing. I know. I did notice. Senpai. Senpai. Isaac. Isaac. Senpai Isaac. Is that a <laughs> authorized nickname? Can we go with that? I'm good with ha- that. Hashtag Senpai Isaac. Start the trend. Start it trending. It's going to be a thing. Tell your friends it's going to be big. Any news on uh, on Sanderson Watch 2019? Uh, I don't see an update just Brand, yet. Brand, sorry, not Sanderson. Brandon Watch. Shame Brandon on myself. Watch. You're doing great. Don't Again, just <laughs> wonderful. Top notch. This is the height of broadcast. We're great. We're great. But no, there's no update. Podcast. Don't worry. I'm on this. Okay. 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 Um, minor projects. Actually. Yes. Yeah. So minor projects. The Reckoners. Jordan, you're done. Good. The Reckoners are done. They so is Legion. Um, but he is talking about doing some audio originals with the Reckoners and with uh, with Legion. So it's that's an the thing interesting, that's interesting thought. So what do y'all think about just a Legion radio show? Well, that I already be... gave my opinions on the radio show idea, and again, we're we're good with this. <laughs> I still, I, I feel bad to admit it, but no I haven't hullabaloo. read the second or third Legion yet. Oh, I own them. Oh. I haven't read them yet. And I know I could just do it, but I've been so focused on finishing all of his Cosmere stuff. And then I was a little bit burned out on reading and I keep being busy. So I haven't had focus. The but, Legion audiobooks are really good. The narrators Well, I, I have the physical ones and they're short enough that I could manage to do them. I just need to do it. So. Worth doing. So. So they're on my list as well. Sorry, that was the same cadence as I just need to rule it. (laughs) I just need to rule it. I just need to read it. (laughs) Oh, now you're going to start me on that crap. Uh, Anyway, my children know the songs too. It's fun. Well, and then the other thing is, yeah, so I just, I like the idea of a Legion radio show, especially because then you can start doing the voices for the different aspects. And, the, and, and they'd be different people or people yeah, doing or somebody. That doing would actually voices. work really well for that. And the other yeah. thing is that it would be Brandon produced. Now the, the downside of that mm-hmm. is if it was Brandon produced, that means Brandon is working on it and not other things. Um, the, that, and the that's way the ta- big problem for Brandon. But going forward. the way he's talking about it is that it would be like a writer's room and he would be the showrunner. So he's not the one writing every episode. He's just sort of steering the ship and then telling everybody else where to kind of Make go sure with things. their plots. Yeah. And if I there's would actually anything be okay with I've that. learned with Brandon is that he, he tends to under, uh, not value, what's the word I'm looking for? Underestimate Delegate? the power, like how long something will take. Yes. He's, mm. I mean, he's, he went on about that in this post yeah. even. And so, yeah. He says it shouldn't be too too much, and I want to believe him, but <laughs> it is what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, the other thing is, 
uh, do y'all remember anything about the apocalypse guard? I read the little chapter and I thought it was kind of cute. And then, so, no. The concept is interesting. It's basically an inner reality police force mm-hmm. in the Reckoners multiverse. And it's and like the main character is like this random gopher lady like girl. She, yeah, she's like the... She's like secretary? the intern or secretary. Intern. Or that, I was like, I know there's a word for intern. Yeah. And so she's like getting people coffee and whatever else. Uh-huh. And one of her, it's either her boyfriend or her ex-boyfriend is one of the the people that go uh-huh. and like deal with superhero type things and fix stuff like that. Right. But, but the thing is, Brandon was having trouble getting it to go where he wanted and it. He let it sit for a while and then he started working on it with Dan Wells. And apparently last year when he posted about it, he just said, still working on it getting weirder and he said it kept getting weirder and weirder to the point where like even he said even with dan's help i was not able to get this to go where it's going there hasn't been any movement on it for months it may be dead and it's so sad because it could have been fun but it's taking away from other things that i know i know but i i wouldn't mind seeing the weird version i could be okay Mm. with that (laughs) now adamant i don't know much about other than it was like an episodic space opera thing oh yeah i don't know um, where he was he was gonna write like four short or maybe i'm uh, mixing up this i don't one remember this one i don't know but if yeah. I read the 2016 you know one. but apparently if you want to read more about it go to the 2016 state of the sanderson for more mm-hmm. information and then starburner soul burner i didn't know much about this one but i went back and looked at it and here's how he described it he said it's a space opera fantasy hybrid sort of like dune or star wars and he worked the last time he really worked on this is in 2015 Last year, he posted that it might be good in a video game setting. This year, he just says something's happening, but it's hush-hush for now. I'm intrigued. I don't know if the fact that he said it was in a vid- good for a video game setting last year and the fact that it's hush-hush now have anything to do with each other, but my brain is automatically connecting them. So now I'm just like, yeah, okay, no. we're getting a Brandon Sanderson video, video game. Yeah, and it's- so <laughs> by the end of this hash, you know, it's a Half-Life 3 confirmed, and we're good with this. <laughs> I am so excited for the Brandon Sanderson MMO. It's going to be wonderful. Oh, my it's goodness. Go, it's going to be, be a Cosmere MMO that actually crosses over with all of his other stuff. It's and great. it's also VR at the same time. Oh, dear. It's called, it's called Brandon Infinity. <laughs> and then the others. First. Okay, so and then there's other stuff. And all of these are kind of waiting to be worked on. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'm just going to list them off. There's a Threnody novel. There's a Six of the Dusk sequel. There is another story about Shy and the Emperor's Soul. There is the Silence Divine, which is the one that takes place on Ashen, which is where humans on Roshar came from. There is... Um, I forget. Did he say when the Ashen one would take place? I don't no, remember him he saying. hasn't okay. said. That's, that also, the one, that's also the one that has the disease-based magic system. No. Um, where you get... as Like, there are bacteria that infect you, and as you get sick, you get diseases, and so you... You get powers. It, it, yeah. It's, right. Or get powers. Yes. Yeah. As you sick, of course, you get, dis- get diseases. diseases. Yeah. I'm like, that. that's what we get. We don't get powers like they do. I words talk good now. Are you? What are you talking about? When I get sick, like my nose starts running infinitely. So clearly I get a bag of holding <laughs> up there because I don't know how. <laughs> there, look, not everyone gets to have optic blasts. Some mutants get crappy powers. Okay. <laughs> but he's added a few other things now to this list. There is a secret standalone Cosmere book with magic kites. What the heck is that? <laughs> All I know at is first, Kite Man is really excited about this book. <laughs> at first, I was thinking Mistborn Secret History 2, but then it said book, not novella. And I'm just like, um, what are we getting? Where is it yeah. going to be? And then there's a novel on First of the Sun that doesn't have to do with Six of the Dusk. Mm-hmm. And then just in quotes, a few others. Also, there's a chance that he might bring back Aether of Night and I'm excited because this is one of his unpublished things that you can get. I think you have to ask for it on the 17th Shard forum. Isn't to, Aether of Night the one that's been one. mostly cannibalized, though? Yeah. Not mostly. He... There, have been, there have been big chunks of it, but a lot of it has not been. Okay. The main thing that mm-hmm. he pulled from it is the villain of it was Decay, which became Ruin. I thought, mm-hmm. wasn't that also the one that had Bridge 4 in it? No, that was that was that's, uh, that's the Yolan one. Yeah, or is that, that the, was Dragon Steel. Dragon Steel. That's right. Okay. Yeah, bridge that that uh, bridge four was on there, and Dalinar was on there, and uh, Vasher 
was in there. Huh. And all of those have been pulled to they, Stormlight. They, yeah. Or, you know, uh-huh. Malthus. And then all, of all those, the mm-hmm. one that has me the most excited is the Shy novel. I am mm-hmm. so excited for that. Just because... I still, as much as a fanboy as I am of... Secret history. Of, of Secret history and Kelsier, the Emperor's soul, I think... And I feel I think it's fairly... Like most people seem to agree, it's maybe his best written book, mm-hmm. um, just in terms of what he did with it. it and it's so, it's dense and it mm-hmm. flows well. And we've talked about it for a whole other hour earlier. Yeah. That said, yeah. I'm trying to divorce it from the Emperor's Soul in my mind, just because part so much of that was the setting and yeah. how it all worked. Well, and so that's and... that's why I'm very intrigued. What can he do with mm-hmm. Shy? With less of a, a bottle up, confined, yeah, exactly. where she's confined and whatever else. Like, what exactly. happens when you let her loose? Mm-hmm. I, like in my head, in any sort of <laughs> Avengers scenario, Shy would be one of the coolest characters because even though on any other world she's got nothing in terms of actual power, I just think her way of thinking about things yep. would oh, make yeah. her. Almost sort of like a Green Arrow or Batman style person where mm. they just read the situation so correctly that they mm-hmm. can outwit people. And I just, oh, I yeah. think she could be very, very interesting. Oh, or yeah. like, like yeah, even without power, she is. Isn't there like Oracle or something like that? Who's that? Mm-hmm. In the or- Birds of Prey. Yeah. 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 O- Oracle is uh, Barbara Gordon. Yes. So formerly right. Batgirl. I'm I'm kind of excited for a Threnody just because I mean there's so much we don't know about Threnody That's true. and how I the sh- know. shades. Yes, the the ghost things. The shades are mm-hmm. like how they work and like do you have to die a certain way to become that way or is it just well? In, so we know from secret history of all things that Naj says that it's supposed to be rights that let them do mm-hmm. things like what Kelsier did. And yeah. so clearly they have some sort of, I guess it would be a death magic almost. Hmm. Yeah. Um, just given, like, we don't know any specifics on it. We only have that one throwaway line from Naj. And so... That and the fact that Ambition is the shard. Yeah. And, but yeah, even and there's, and there's Ambition was long they're dead. wandering. They're mm. wandering outside of Threnody. Like they were pushing up against where um, the... Oh. Irie. The Irie yeah. were, yes. I was like, mm-hmm. there's there's letters and the words. And, and so gone. it's, we don't know much. And we don't even, and the other thing is we don't know the time frame. So we don't know if this would be yeah. before or after the evil shows up on Threnody. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And if I had to guess, my guess would actually be Brandon would write a book about the evil coming. And yeah. my guess is it'd be a, a, an escape story. Mm story that sort of leads up to us find you know the to the society that we see in see shadows in for silence for silence yeah mm-hmm. yeah absolutely okay and then okay here's the one that i'm interested in but also worried about is film and television mm. okay snapshot that's non cosmere it was actually a, a very short novella that he wrote with a really interesting premise. I don't want to get into spoilers on this one just because it's so short and it's it's interesting. But basically the concept is that they can recreate the a entire crime. world from certain points and figure out who committed crimes. Hmm. It's, a, it's an interesting idea. And I think that one I think could actually be a very good movie. Because, um, I mean, it, it sounds like Minority Report and other things that have mm-hmm, similar exactly. touches about them, yeah. Yeah, and it is under option by MGM. No updates beyond that. Stormlight Archive. I'm worried because it's not done. I'm yet. not. I'm not super. Ex- First off, yeah, I don't. Sorry, I have to I'm, interrupt I'll, you. We have an update from the Brandon Sanderson. Update seven. Nine thousand words. Thirteen scenes. Not exactly sure how many are left. There are a lot of quick cuts involved here, of course, Brandon. So a lot are exactly f- aren't exactly full scenes. I'm just cutting each cut as one for the purpose of counting here. Maybe twenty, maybe twenty five total. I'll know more soon. <laughs> My favorite part is watching just the uh, like the favorite totals skyrocket in units of like six and twelve. <laughs> 
Which is a fitting number. As everyone's uh, just hitting, yes, more. Yes, Hit yes. the button that makes more things happen. Uh, thank you for this brief <laughs> Brandon Watch report. We will so now sorry, we have to concerns. our regular chat podcast. <laughs> I, do, I do have concerns because right now, the guy who he's working with, his biggest credits are producing Iron Man 3 and Looper. Looper was pretty like, good. What is yeah. Looper? I don't even know what Looper is. Looper is it's... the one where they send Bruce Willis people... has to kill himself. <laughs> yeah, they send people back in time to a hitman in the past, and he kills them for them, so it leaves no body, basically. And then... I guess I haven't ever seen that. Yeah, well, the, it's, it's the actually, big reveal like, is that at one point it's, it's they send sentencing. himself back. Yeah. Oh. Basically, he works for the government. They send mm-hmm. him Sorry, yeah, you're right. criminals to execute. And then suddenly one of them is him from the future. Oh, which is a problem. And so played by Bruce Willis. Play, played yeah. by Bruce Willis. And I think the young version is who is it? I don't remember. Anyway. But yeah, Iron Man um, three was okay. And, and I'm but... just sitting here just like I first off, I don't know that I ever want it to be adapted. I don't think anything could do it proper justice the the only thing like most brandon works i don't feel confident as it as a standalone movie mm-hmm. uh, like if it was if it were game of thrones style adaptation where it's going to be a long form series and we have mm-hmm. a full season to explore these ideas then i'd feel a lot more comfortable but like just think of like adapting mistborn as a film hmm Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, well, how on earth are we going to do all the little scenes of Vin learning from the other, you know, the other members of the, the other, crew? Yeah, the other mistings. How but are you going to properly show her using her and powers? Because well, it's a movie isn't long enough for it because there's too much that you need as um, base knowledge to make sure that you're understanding the allomancy well. Well, not only that, if they start adapting it now... We've still got about 20 to 21 years before Brandon finishes the Storm the era, yeah. Yes, and so we haven't Number even three. gotten into that problem. Which, Which I mean, look if, at what if that they did only to... do... The... Exactly, and that's the big fear. Like, Game of yeah. Thrones... Well, and this my, this my biggest fear has nothing to do with even the content. George R. R. Martin, who... I don't read his books, so, you know, yeah, if don't. you're a Song of Ice and Fire fan... Sorry, I don't have the full context. But from looking outside, it looks to me like he's been completely sidetracked by all these side projects. And he, has, and he hasn't written anything in a very long time. That mm-hmm. said, Brandon has a much better track record of staying consistent. But even now, Brandon has not produced anywhere near as much as he used to in terms of books. He has well, a lot more side and, projects. And... And that's what, you know, one of the main points of this post towards the end was, you know, because Brandon's talking about how he realizes at his current rate, the uh, first off, he's got about 30 more Cosmere books to write before he's done. And that's a lot of books. He's written about half that many in the past. What was it? 10, 15 years. Mm hmm. And so he he said on the conservative end, he would be at this rate, 74 by the time he finishes the Cosmere. And so he is going to be focusing a lot more on the Cosmere. I am personally ecstatic about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, finish Alcatraz, finish the Rhythmatist and then just Cosmere and finish Skyward and then just Cosmere straight through. Because Skyward has four, right? It's supposed to be four books. Skyward will be four. But they seem like they go pretty fast for him. They do seem like they work quickly. And Alcatraz, he has written each of those in like a day or two. They, I'm sorry, what? I d- I'm sorry, pause, have what? You, have you read the Alcatraz books? <laughs> no, I have not. They're, they're like middle they're, grade. Yeah, they're middle grade. So they're written they're, they're for super seventh, fast. seventh graders or okay, so. Okay, but Sixth, how many graders. pages? I can go grab one. About 220, but they're larger print. Still, that means he's them? writing a hundred pages in a day. My goodness, this man like, is a superhuman. Well, he is. <laughs> and we love him. For no, him. I know that the first one was written in like a day or two. And like, I'm happy if, like, in a day, I'm like, you know what? I got my room entirely clean. It's a pretty good day. 
Brandon's like, oh, yeah. you know, I sort of just crapped out this book. <laughs> <laughs> and they're 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 fun uh, little like they're not as intense by any means oh, no. as and but and they're just sort of silly goofy humor mm-hmm. like this is brandon like just, what is it like the main character's superpower is that he's always late to things including bullets in, yeah including his own death yeah and so it's Saved his life once or something in one of the books. I don't remember. It's, uh-huh. it's been a long time since I read them, and we only own like four of them, I think. So I, I didn't get into them as much, but I have our. I don't know. I don't get into kids' yeah. books as much as I used one, to. One of them, uh, his talent is he gets lost all the time, and then he discovers that he can be used to teleport. Oh, so, <laughs> I don't know if I got to that part. <laughs> and so it's harnessing these these supposedly negative talents and using them for good in a powerful way yeah. it's it's, it's a, just a brilliant concept it's mm-hmm. very very silly though and yeah. wonderful um it's probably my least favorite series of, you know that he's done but it's still a lot of fun yeah i probably should show them to my daughter because she could probably read them oh yeah I she'd think probably she'd be like old it. enough now mm-hmm. um but yeah so you know he's going to be focusing a lot more on the Cosmere, and I'm I'm actually really really happy about it's, that. It's it's just such and, a heavy topic to bring up, like uh-huh. oh I know to to have a life work like that and think to yourself, crap I'm I'm running but I'm behind schedule, and that's like oh uh-huh. well what's due, death. Well, well, and the thing is he's he's not behind schedule right now, but what he's realized is now is the time to think about this rather than waiting until he's behind schedule. And then, well, can't and, do it, and then and, and then we up, end up yeah. with a Robert Jordan situation. Yeah, well, and does, he I, he brought that up in the post, right? I don't or think am so. I, or I'm imagining that. Okay, we, yeah. You and I talked about it. Okay, yeah. He, I mean, he wrote those books for Robert Jordan. That's one mm-hmm. of the reasons for the big delay in a lot of the Cosmere stuff because mm-hmm. he had he to had take them. care of this other man's legacy, who meant so much to Brandon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know what an honor, but at the same time, mm-hmm. that's got to make you start thinking. Well, like yeah. I, I mentioned to you, Jordan, even though that was quite an honor, I'm sure that Brandon himself would have rather Robert Jordan finish those books. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and so, from by all accounts, it was his favorite writer. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of his favorite writers, one of his biggest inspirations as well. I mean, the only one that I know Brandon defended in web forums in the late 90s, apparently. <laughs> uh, why? Because Brandon is one of us. <laughs> he is. He is definitely one of us. Um, okay, so back to film projects, though. So mm-hmm. I'm not... Honestly, I could see Stormlight doing well as an animated series. I think it'd be, like, it'd be it, cheaper it, to do it that way than to do it'd it. It'd be live cheaper action. to do it that way, but I and I think you could do a lot more with it in that well, format. Look at something like Netflix's Castlevania series. Mm-hmm. Like that oh, is exactly. yeah. it's gorgeous. It is mm-hmm. absolutely beautiful the way it's animated. It's super gory. <laughs> oh, it, it is. But <laughs> But it's the, Castlevania, so yeah. It, yeah, it's what you expect. You know, look, it's not like Stormlight is gonna be uh, <laughs> you know, a walk in the park, you know. Mm-hmm. No, that's true. <laughs> but Heaven but, help but like, us when we get to Evie's death, you know? Oh, but like, oh, if, oh. If we oh, hand over okay. Stormlight to somebody like Greg Weissman, though. Yeah, I would love that. It would work so well. Who's For Greg the record, Weissman? Greg Weissman Greg... is the guy who did Gargoyles. My he... favorite animated show oh. of all time. Spectacular okay, Spider-Man, right. which if, you, if you're listening to this and you haven't watched Spectacular Spider-Man... Please give it a watch. It's a very well done. It's my favorite version of Spider-Man, uh, to be honest. And mm. then uh, he also does Young Justice. Which, oh, it does Young yeah. Justice. Okay. Yeah, he he and Bruce Tim did Young Justice together, and that was just I still need to wonderful. finish that. He also did, uh, I believe he I did Clone it. Wars was also him. I, think. I don't know. I didn't know that. He did one if of the Star the Wars animated series. I can't remember which. Very cool. I still need to go. Now that I have Disney Plus, I can go through and do all that. Yeah, that's true. We I are not sponsored too. by Disney Plus. Yet. But if they want to, that's totally fine. If Disney Plus, <laughs> if you want to sponsor us. I'll shill for we you. We are it's happy cool. to shill. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
we oh, can gosh. be bought. We don't want like we don't want the impression that our integrity will go so far <laughs> as to prevent us from getting. This I've type read of enough books to say that everyone has a price, and so I'm just. I let's find mine. That's I'm for curious. any rule of acquisition eighty seven. <laughs> I think it is. Oh gosh! Dang it! Now I got to find out which is, rule of acquisition it is. The sad oh. thing is, I'm going to keep this in the episode. I'm not editing it out. So. Why would you edit out? It's, why would Why would you remove that which is perfect? We're already Indeed. rambling and wandering around. It's all good. It's all good. Mm. But okay, so Steelheart. Um, so that was optioned by Fox. And speaking of Disney, Disney bought Fox and pretty much let everything lapse. And so Brandon right now is trying to figure out how to present that to studios again, just to see if they want to make movies yeah. or TV. Because that one, that one could it. work well. That one. I think it I would think. work. I think it mm-hmm. could be a good trilogy. I'm sorry, um, which one? Steelheart. Steelheart. Okay. Yeah. The Reckoners. The Reckoners. Yeah, as much as... Look, I like The Reckoners. It I has issues too. in books two and three, personally. Mm-hmm. But again, some of that could be fixed in an adaptation. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, let's see, Legion. Right now it's under option to, Cinef- it says Cineflix Media. I don't know them. No updates. And of course, like we talked about before, he may be eventually turning that into a self produced radio program, which, again, I'm intrigued by. Um, one thing that I can't remember if it was through Brandon or not, but I remember hearing that like a lot of times studios and stuff will just buy options to things and just hold them. Right. And not actually do anything. So a lot of times right. when you're seeing that so-and-so has the rights, doesn't mean anything's going to actually if, happen. If you want a really, really good explanation of how rights and green lighting and all of those things, those phases work, look at last year's State of the Sanderson, the 2018. Oh, maybe that's Brandon, where it was. Brandon went into a really good that's explanation probably what it of was, how it all then. works. Because I, also, I, I think it was that. Uh, as an aside, for the record, uh, it was rule of acquisition 98 that everyone has this price. Oh, thank you. Uh. This was absolutely crucial information <laughs> I understand. that I needed. <laughs> I did, look, I know that there are seven Trekkies somewhere in our thing that I said 87, and they're just sitting here. What an idiot. It's 98. Moron. 98. Unsubscribed. <laughs> so <laughs> Thank I you for to, saving those, those three listeners. Look, us. I have to think. Look, we are not in any spot where we can be picky. Remember the whole shill conversation from earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Are these Ferengi rules of acquisition? I'm trying yes. to remember where yes. they come from. Oh, okay, good. I do know something. I'm not just a Star Wars fan. I do like Star Trek too. It, I'm just not as deep in the Star like, are Trek. Are these Ferengi rules one. of acquisition? Uh, no, they're, they're um, <laughs> hut rules of acquisition. No, I know the difference. Oh, know the difference. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, these are the Jedi rules of acquisition. There's a new order. <laughs> I have altered the deal. Pray I it further. I like it. I mm. like it. Um, Skyward, apparently he can't talk about it, but there's a deal in the works. Same with Alcatraz. Mm-hmm. So that'd be interesting. I'd Dark be, very, one we already talked I'd be about. very interested in Skyward as a series of some kind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you know, I've said I, I didn't really care for the first book. I haven't read the second mm-hmm. one yet, but... I think getting out of her head for people like me fixes a lot of yeah. issues. And that and I, mean, I have a feeling the visuals are going to be pretty dang good. You just think about Top oh, yeah. Gun and how well that did back yeah. in the 80s. Was it Speaking 80s or was of, it? I'm, ex- I'm excited for the sequel. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, I'm a nerd, but I am excited for Top Gun Maverick. It's been a long time since I've actually watched the original. You could be my wingman any day. Goose. Speaking of, we had goose in the, in the did, chat that's earlier. Right. And then we had maybe that's what it was. Goose, maybe that was supposed to be Tom Cruise <laughs> yelling him in that horrible scene. Goose. Yeah, and then the last one for Mistborn. This is interesting. He's mentioned possibly writing the screenplay himself. That won't be. A I find intriguing. Well, mm-hmm. I actually find that to be a positive thing because if I remember right. For a little while, the people who were attached to it, I was very, very displeased with who had been attached yeah. because mm-hmm. their their major credits were Saw 4 through 6 oh, yeah. and uh, Piranha 3 Double D. No, thank you. I looked it up on, on IMDb and I don't see their names on it right now. So hopefully that's a good sign. <laughs> it's a good sign. So, so my concern with Brandon himself writing the screenplay... Uh, mm-hmm. It completely stems from a similar situation with Stephen King, 
who didn't like a lot of the adaptations of his works. And mm-hmm. so he did one similar, and it's basically one of the worst films that was ever created. Mm. If you want to see a fun review, go to Nostalgia Critic. Uh, st- any Stephen King review from him, it's going to be gold. The uh, the other worry, actually, is that you end up with a uh, an Orson Scott card situation with Ender's Game. Mm-hmm. Because Ender's Game, like, it was just, there were so many possibilities for a movie over decades. And he, the other thing is Card was actually a, a script writer himself. Mm-hmm. And it finally came out. And honestly, it was one of the most underwhelming things. Yeah, I mean, it and looked so kind of pretty. I remember that, but I don't remember it making an impact. On yeah, I don't, I don't want to see that happen to Mistborn. And it takes away from writing time other things. For right. new stuff, and so. it just mm-hmm. gets back to me being like, I'd rather see Mistborn as a series. Yeah, agreed. Um, mm-hmm. Now, okay, this is something that I wasn't <gasps> expecting, but it seems really cool. There's a Stormlight Children's book in the works, and Isaac is working on it and laying it out and ad- adapting it, and it's mm-hmm. going to be an ad- adaptation of The Girl Who Looked Up. <laughs> I'm I sorry, what was that early. evil laugh for? <laughs> I have a children's it book. It will be again. cosmic related. So then I can I can be like, look, there's this great kids book. We should read it together, children. And then when you're bigger, we can read harder books together. Like normal Cosmere books. <laughs> this is a normal way of raising your children. No concerns here. Of course. Here. It's totally normal. With Just uh, okay, don't do the evil laugh when you bring it laughs. to them. I won't. I won't here, do the children. evil laugh. This is the girl who looked up. (laughs) No. No. But the thing is, if all goes according to plan, it'll actually come out around the same time as Stormlight Book 4. So that'd be this year. Which I like. Mm -hmm. It'll be difficult to do an an episode on a children's book, but I bet we can. (laughs) We can make this happen. Don't worry. We will make it happen. I will make it happen. I'm excited about the next one. I'm really, 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 really it's, excited go, about the next just one. Just say what it is, Bill. Just say it. It's a board game. It's <laughs> Call to Adventure, the Stormlight Archive. Okay, so here's the story. Call to Adventure is a game that was kickstarted, and it was supposed to have all these different modules that attach to it, and you can do stuff based around book series. There's one for Name of the Wind, um, a module that came out for it. They started working on a module for the Stormlight Archive, and then it grew to the point where it's getting its own game. And I am <laughs> so freaking excited about this. That's just Especially so weird. Brandon's you... projects never tend to explode like that. It you know normally stays a nice small size. No. Jordan, did you just have a stroke? <laughs> no. You're so, you're you're saying you're talking crazy talk. That's but just anyway, no, but uh. So the, the, here's the description. He says, play, you, you, players build characters using cards that will define the hero's origin, motivation, and destiny. And then you can, as, as you build the characters, you send them on missions and stuff like that. And you can work together to defeat Odium, or you can choose to be a villain and work against them. Mm-hmm. And guys, the illustrations I've seen are gorgeous. Uh, Jordan, you remember the one I showed you of the stained glass, the visions? The, yeah. Renarum was having that's what it's from oh okay i didn't realize that was mm. what it was for like it's it's like amazing art and so it uh, he has a few examples of it in the post so check it out check it out check it out because it looks really good and then he also talked a little what was bit the about date the mis- on that he was estimating sometime was that really the we don't have a date yet Okay, but I I think it they're hoping on it this year sometime. I don't know the exact. I mean, twenty twenty, right? Because this year is this coming right. year. Coming new brand <laughs> alert. Not, the board game has been re- released just tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I just keep saying this year enough. No, guys, when I say this year, I'm referring to twenty twenty. That is a blanket statement. Thank you. Sorry, I have something big happening tomorrow, so I still have twenty nineteen very firmly in my mind. So. Yes. Within the next 365 days. <laughs> if this yes. release is December 31st next year, you're going to have so much egg on your face. <laughs> yeah, but you'll have a... <laughs> uh, I want to slap you right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, so apparently the, uh, the the Mistborn Metal Dice Kickstarter is now ended. 
Yeah, that's over. It looks super cool. It hit all the stretch goals, which means I'm getting all the dice. And you know all what? Four sets of dice. Like clearly, that was because of the power of the six community, uh, yes. just pushing everything over the threshold. I think we deserve yep. a good, uh, hearty pat on the back for that. And a bag of dice. Just one. Bag, definitely a bag of dice. If you kiss your listening, <laughs> no. you're fairly charitable. <laughs> What are no, you talking about? I've, I've, I, I'm getting the dice. I'm excited. You gave them money for it. It was a regular. I gave exchange. them lots of money for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Let's not let's not undersell this. But what was all? I'm sorry. What this is an aside. But what were all were you getting in that again? So in so I'm getting the full set of twenty metal dice. I'm getting a uh, a fancy dice tower. That's right. I'm getting a, a fancy dice tray that's engraved with all the symbols of the dice and everything. Mm. And because of the stretch goals, I'm getting three sets of acrylic dice. One of them is the Farukami symbols. Oh, yeah. One of them is the Alloy of Law era versions of the Alimantic symbols. Oh, and one of them is the regular Alimantic symbols. Hmm. I didn't know they changed that for... Me- for alloy of it, it, they just sort of stylistically changed well, oh, if, okay. if you look it's actually so it's very similar this is again brandon's amazing world building it's very similar if you look and, at like the letters Isaac's in, amazing work yeah if you look at the the like how the letters looked in greece you know and then how oh, they evolved versus... the next le- mm-hmm. level and then so it's more like old english letters versus modern ones where you can see we've or cut the, out okay. some of the or the evolution names. of uh, or the evolution of japanese kanji yeah, where everything mm. gets simplified over time. Exactly. Yeah, from hiragana to katakana yeah. as well. Because they call it... <laughs> but yeah, and so the <sighs> their symbols have a little less ornateness to them because they're yeah. actually using it as a written language. More people can read, and thus it would naturally get shorter, easier to do. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited because I'm going to be getting 80 dice. So... <laughs> <laughs> 20 that's, of them that's 80 metal. the number not 80 uh the the holder of uh yeah Ruin. that'd be a little scary actually one of them is adium yeah. so and one of them is mal- maladium so and one of them is harmonium yeah so but i just want to know be careful eight. with that dice i still think we shouldn't bounce it do not lick <laughs> definitely don't lick <laughs> no licking no uh okay so guys let me read you the projected schedule. This is the next three years or four years or so. So next year, we should be getting the the original audio novella that we talked about that he wrote with Mary Robinette Kowal. What was that called the, again? The original. The original. That's right. It's called the... See, this is going to cause so much confusion for me. <laughs> we'll also yeah, be getting yeah. Stormlight 4. Hype train starts <laughs> now. On 11-17-20. And Brandon is finishing it as we record. I just think that's so cool. No updates for the record. No updates yet. Well, we haven't hit the hour mark yet. And well, hi, Rosie. we also might be getting the uh, the the girl who looked up children's book. Yes. Which I actually collect children's books, so this is perfect for me. Um, It'll go great next are... to my Ghostbusters children's book. <laughs> Skyward 3 should be coming in summer of 2021 and Wax and Wayne 4 should be coming in fall of 2021 or you might need to reverse those depends on how Brandon's feeling yeah. uh, depending it basically depends on how burned out of, on epic fantasy is after finishing Stormlight yeah um, then we get the graphic novel it says of Dark One it says 2021 to 2022 I'm not sure if that means it'll be an in installments or if that means that it'll be one of those. So, and then Skyward Four, which is the conclusion of that series in 2022, and then in 2023, Stormlight Five, which is the conclusion of the first arc. Da-na-na-na. Did I do that right? Close dun, was that Zelda? Was dun, that Zelda? Yeah. Yeah. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I do yeah. find it's one of those things that, that I know it's. I know it's fair at the same time. I'm like, man, three year gap. Oh, but he's yeah. basically two, probably. Well, plus, I mean, like, we'll have to read that book like at least three times in the meantime. Yeah, so much. So, it's just weird to be thinking, what are we going to have to cover three years from now? <laughs> ah. Yeah. So think how Brandon feels. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, it's like somebody was asking. 
I, I saw a Reddit post where, that was asking if Brandon was going to because they they weren't a fan of how the Mistborn leather bounds looked, and they're like, is he going to do like re you know redone versions in another ten years? I'm just like, no, in another ten years he'll be doing leather bounds for other books that other are, books like books that are coming out right now, yeah. and and so it's just like no. That's a big undertaking. He probably won't be doing new editions. He, I mean, he may continue to re-release the current editions, but I don't think he'll be mm-hmm. doing new ones. Yeah, especially if he's doing like new artwork in them or whatever else. That would be a lot for. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's yeah. one of those things that I wish I had collected back in the day. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that there were these leather-bound things till I was well into reading the Cosmere. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh, so I could have had this the entire time. For now, I'm 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 pretty good with Nightblade Nightblood on the cover of my book. I'm good with yeah. that for now. Uh, war, no so. Warbreaker. As soon as I saw he was doing Leatherbounds, I just started thinking. I was like, "Oh, Warbreaker is going to be gorgeous." Yeah, it actually like looking at some of the artwork. I was like, "Dang it! Now I want to make that outfit." <laughs> of course you do. Of course I do. But guys, looking forward. This the Cosmere really is just enormous. Mm-hmm. Right now, one could say it's outline, of uh, universal proportions. Right now, his <laughs> outline is thirty-five books. Yeah, and there are potential novellas and YA books. He's also talked about possibly doing a uh, st- or a not Steam a uh, cyberpunk Mistborn novel between eras three and four. Three and four, yeah, and just all sorts of stuff. I'm just like. There's so much to go. So much. Like he's only a third of the way through this. <gasps> it's it's sobering so awesome. to see how far he has to plan ahead. Because <laughs> like I'm sitting here thinking like, crap, what am I going to eat tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. And he's thinking, what are the Mistborn going to eat tomorrow? And in 200 years. It'll be and metal. And in 300 years. It'll always be metal. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so all the way down. So he he put up a list. So three Elantris, the first one's completed. Three Mistborn Era One, all three are completed. Five Stormlight Era One, or like Block One, and the first three are completed. Four is coming <laughs> out next year. Um, four Mistborn Era Two books, the first three are completed. Warbreaker 1 is completed. Warbreaker 2 is not, which I think is going to be That was Limbo. Blood. Yeah. What? Was Limbo? It's, yeah, it's, well, it's, it's in just, Limbo. It's or one it's of the ones that'll holding. probably be done. Yeah, that's in the holding pattern probably after Wax and Wayne Storm. 4. Yeah, Wax and Wayne and Stormlight maybe. And then um, Mistborn Era 3. There will be three of those. There will be five more on the back half of Stormlight. Mm-hmm. Three Dragonsteel books. An untitled Trinity novel, uh, three Aether of Night books, it looks like, and then three Mistborn Era 4. It's crazy. That's a lot. And is it Mistborn? So Mistborn Era 3, is that one supposed to be the Space Age one, or is that 4? Era 3 is 80s. Era 3 is 80s Spycraft. Okay. Which is is Cold Cold War Spycraft stuff. Hmm. No, um, <laughs> like no, Mister Ladrian. I expect you to die. In Soviet Luthadel, metal burns you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> title well played, right my friend. Yes. Yep, that's it. That is definitely the title. <laughs> Jordan, mm-hmm. how long you been sitting? I guess you can't have been sitting on that one. I, that just I came right that, out. No, that's that's just, that, that's cool. a handcrafted joke for you people. I made that just for you. That's that's the type of quality you get. I appreciate that. Golf clap for you. There you go. Oh, thank you. That's my favorite mm-hmm. type of clap. You're welcome. I love the way he signed off on this. He said, "I hope you're enjoying enjoying the journey. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon." And that's just one of the reasons that I love Brandon as a writer, because I, you actually feel like y'all, you're on the journey together. Mm-hmm. Like he's, he's sort of guiding it, but he's experiencing it too. Like again, when he posted um, about how he writes the ends of books and it just sort of takes off and rushes through and it all kind of comes down in one epic long writing session. I'm just like, 
he 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 experiences the avalanche the same way we do. <laughs> you sit down, and once you cross a line, there is no stopping until you get to the other side. You just yes. go. No breaks on this. Nope. No. The thing I like about it is Brandon is a planner when he com- mm. when it comes to writing, but at the same time. As much as he's a planner, I think he discovers a lot on the way mm-hmm. that oh, he yes. does. I, I would love to to ask him, just like what character did you sit down and they surprised you more than than the others? Mm-hmm. It, he's I, asked, that that question I think has been asked actually. Uh, I'd have to go find that word of Brandon. Yeah, um, I'll, but I'll I just, take a look I just that, love right. that it, it, truly he does put the journey before the destination. Mm-hmm. He really does. But yeah, it's it's like just looking at this, the whole thing, the lists of all the various books, it it seriously reads like a, a list of things you have to do to get an achievement. And wow, mm-hmm. there's just so many little bits and pieces to it. And you just wonder, like, what happens at night when he sees that list in his head? Oh, yes. Hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't find the word of Brandon. I'll, I'll try and find it later. But yeah. Uh, so final thoughts, guys. What do you think? I like that he has a parrot. Or a macaw, rather. That wasn't in uh, this. You, it was in the newsletter, but... You mean, you mean a dragon? Yes, a dragon with feathers. <laughs> you know, I, I like his reasoning. He raises some good points that it's the closest thing we have to dragons because they fly, they're descended from dinosaurs, they can talk. Mm-hmm. Dragon. I'll, I'll buy that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's got some good logic. I, I'm really, for me, the biggest takeaway from this was that uh, Wax and Wayne are going to get done before Stormlight 5 and probably uh, end of 2020. Mm-hmm. The thing that was interesting is he said it's imperative that mm-hmm. he finished that before Stormlight 5. And I'm just like, what does that mean? For me, I think that means that he needs to get out of that headspace and have it's, that it's possible. And have that very for me, space to what do it means five. is that whatever's going on with Trell uh-huh. is going to be important for five. And that I, that, is, that's what that's I'm another thinking. option. Yeah. Well, and the Trell stuff, though, he said that they'll, that'll get more in Mistborn Era 3. Yeah. Mm. But I think we'll need to get whatever the the because you know that there's going to be a hook. At the end of, of Wax and Wayne 4. What? No, he normally uh, wraps things up in a tight little bow. There is going to be a big There's nothing hook left I'm... over. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, guys, the Cosmere's just done. There's no it's more done. intrigue. Seal with a bow. We're the, good. So the other, sorry, the other big takeaway that we didn't really discuss it, the, as far as I was intrigued by, was the concept of him thinking about things of subletting books to other authors. Yes. Um, that the intrigues me for two different reasons. One... I would actually love uh, one of my favorite uh, book series growing up was the Dragonlance novels. Mm -hmm. Um, And there were all sorts of little one off stories that went to different parts of this world. One of my favorites uh, focused on just some some dragon kin and Mm -hmm. what was going on. I thought it was really hilarious to read. I, I, I really liked the writing on it. Well, I would love to see other books like that. But the other reason I'm intrigued by it, Brandon has been teaching a class for years at a college. He has, he has been molding people, shaping them. Fair enough. And Mm -hmm. Sutton tells me that he, a lot of his former students could be people that he would take, you know, dump a project onto because he has helped form their writing to be the, to take the the approach for his writing style. Oh boy, that sounds kind of sinister in some ways. <laughs> he's creating his own little what, secret writing army. Jedi what has Brandon making, told us? Is, is he a pants writer or does he outline? He's an I like to oh, think no. that there is somewhere a board in his house <laughs> that just has string, and it's his master plan. And like by the end of this, someone is running the Illuminati that uh, Brandon's choosing. Charlie Holmberg, if you're listening, you're probably on that list. <laughs> Be careful, Charlie. 
these are deep, dangerous waters. He makes us swim. Indeed. And the question uh, is, what has he planned for us? Well, and the other that? thing is that like it's you clear were talking about dra- just part of his entire. You were talking here. about Dragonlance. There's also stuff like. The Star Wars expanded universe. Yes, yes. Yes, it's now considered Star Wars Legends and not canon. I am all up for the Cosmere extended universe. I would love the Cosmere expanded universe. Mm -hmm. I just, I think that would be so cool. Of course, Brandon is telling our main stories. He he's got the uh, the 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 root canon stuff. Well, but I would love to see some people's takes on Cosmere stuff. Take a book like the the concept of the Wander Sale. Or, mm-hmm. or his Lopin book that he has sort of, yeah. he has bouncing just, around his head. Characters from the interludes of Stormlight. Mm-hmm. Like some of them, that, like just little side characters are just like, what about that guy? We're finally like, going to get the stick novel this way. <laughs> right? What if somebody decided to do a novel all about the general, the, the Herdesian general? Oh, yeah. Or... You know, and like how he became the guy you know <laughs> mm, or like the guy who's going around gathering all the wood with the lighthouse like what's up with him and his family's cult or religion uh-huh. or whatever that would i mean or, let's face it reading that it came off a little culty <laughs> or it let's did, fi- yeah yeah or let's find slow. more about ishik the, the yeah, guy ishik. from the pure lake i love how i go high pitched when i say ishik <laughs> like i i, 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 I i'm can glad that you like brought that it up work. now <laughs> I can, but I can see why how stuff like that would actually work well in an expanded universe. More mm-hmm. stuff on six of the uh, or on first of the sun, mm-hmm. you know, because we're not going to have a whole lot of stuff there. Um, but you know, and so I just like suddenly, suddenly there's a world we can explore well, hey, a, a little a bit more. A Spren novel on the other side oh, of yeah. the cognitive realm. Oh yes, and it could always tie in with like little hints of somebody from the normal, you know, the normal realm showing up or something on, reflects honestly back or whatever. to our listeners here's some homework for you if you come up with an idea that you think would be a really cool expanded un- cosmere expanded universe novel for another author to pick up and write send it in if you have an idea for the author or if you don't just send it in i am curious to see what y'all have so mm-hmm. send that to cosmere studies at gmail.com i'd love to read that yeah it's a sign of how deep his universe is that you could set up a book around so many different characters and so many different places, and mm-hmm. it could have a very good story arc, even though it lacks the the, the, the insane the, yeah the insane stakes of something mm-hmm. bigger like a Mistborn or a Stormlight book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean you could give you could end up with a uh, an Emperor Soul type story from somebody else even. Yeah, you know, just a mm-hmm. short bottle episode type thing. Oh, there's so many options. Anyway, we, sh- we really need to move on. We're over time. Um, now, thanks to our patrons, we are able to hold our monthly giveaways. All of our giveaways are, of course, open to everyone, and they're free to enter. For this giveaway, like we announced last episode, we are giving away a paperback doorstop. I mean, copy of The Way of Kings. <laughs> so, um, paper what's the number in Jordan? Book. And, uh, paper <laughs> box. The number, as I click on generate, is eight. That is Ben Stormblessed on Instagram. Ben Stormblessed. It's a nice name. Interesting. Man, I, d- I didn't realize that Brandon pulled that last name from uh, from real life. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah, yeah. so Ben Stormblessed, uh, congratulations. congratulations. Thanks for inter- entering, and we will contact you and get your shipping information and get that out to you as soon as well, possible. His name sounds like a sentence that, that uh, the Lopin would say. <laughs> he been storm blessed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, we've got some great stuff. So special thanks to Brandon Sanderson's online store at store.brandonsanderson.com for sending us a bunch of awesome stuff to give away that we can share with you and enrich your lives as much as you've enriched ours. We are, of course, always looking for interesting topics to discuss on the show. That is where you come in. Write in, ask us your questions about the Cosmere. Drop your idea for a topic on us and let us know what you think you're thinking. 
While you're at it, we'd love to hear your feedback about how you think we're doing, as well as any interesting theories that you might have about what's going on in the Cosmere. Send all questions and suggestions to CosmereStudies at gmail.com, and we could even read your email as part of the show. We haven't really been doing a lot of emails during the show lately. We need to start doing those. We've got a, yeah. we've got a good bit of backlog. Mm-hmm. And we, we might be coming up on another aluminum foil hat theories if if yeah, only we, we had need of more uh more episode content in the future <laughs> we know what we're doing before valentine's day but otherwise i don't know yeah. if we know oh we've got we've got we, a few ideas it's, well nothing look, set in stone for a date though n- november no, of next year is right around the corner it's fine <laughs> Uh, no, we, we, we've actually got a bunch of pos- potential ideas, but we would love to hear yours. We yes, would love more to, is always better. We, w- we want to talk about what you want to hear about. Quantity so, does, is a quality is- all its own. Yes. Uh, now, outside the show, we've got our own personal projects. Amy, why don't you lead us off and tell us what you have been up to? Okay, so my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp, because my name is too long. My Instagram is at coincidence underscore cosplay. And I, as, I like that intentional pause. I try to pause to make it clearer because not everybody's physically watching me or anything else. So I'm, I don't want people to be trying to type all of that into Twitter because it's not going to work. Um, I mean, it's already too long at coincidence <laughs> cosp. <but so. laughs> yeah, cosp is as far as it goes. Um, anyway, so I... I have a Square account that I sell through at Fanex that I got for this at this last Fanex, and I'm making a website to sell my dice and whatever else through there. So that's the biggest thing I've been working on, other than you know doing Christmas and all of that other stuff. So I don't have anything terribly exciting on my page right now, but soon I hope to have more exciting things. Um, but I do have, I guess I'll just say it. So I I already told. Bill and Jordan, obviously, but I, my, my late Christmas gift is that I'm making Miss Cloaks for all three of us. So once I get the fabric and Bill's measurements, I need your measurements still, then I can yeah, buy some, the fabric. Yeah, some jerk, like, completely spaced it. <laughs> That's a personal question. What a, what a, <laughs> what a tool. Anyway, so I'm planning on making those. So once I get those done, I will be posting about them and whatever else, too. It'll be great. We can all wear our Miss Cloaks together. So yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. So yeah, cool. Yeah. Right. And Jordan, how about you? Well, when I am not updating everyone here in the uh, Brandon Sanderson update room, which by the way, there has been no update, but uh, the uh, there's something special that's about to happen this week. So if you're hearing this, and it is before uh, sat- Saturday, what would that be? Crap, that'd be January third. Now, why am I not good at dates? Do do do. January fourth. On January fourth is my five hundredth stream. I am going to be doing a bunch of interactive events on twitch.tv slash splice stream, playing a lot of Jackbox games and some marbles on stream, things that you can play alongside the rest of uh the people viewing. And mm-hmm. I'm also going to do th- because it's the 500th episode, it has to be special. Three separate renditions of story time with Splice. Oh, the last story is the least interesting because it's going to be very heartfelt and mushy and all that st- stupid crap. The first one, though, is going to be a tale called Jordan Plays Diplomacy, which if you don't know what <laughs> diplomacy is, it's basically the best board game ever to help you lose all your friends. Understand yep. that this story gets involved. And you can ask just about any board gamer. Oh they my will God. answer the same. Well, point in fact, the the board ga- the first board game I ever saw of it, like the actual board had board game had the picture was two guys shaking hands with each holding knives behind their back. <laughs> Think of the game as risk with no dice. The dice are replaced with lies. It's pretty much exactly what it is. <laughs> That's an apt description. And then the the second story I, I'm debating on what it's going to be, but rest assured, uh, much like Brandon, I am not a man of few words, and I feel these stories are very entertaining that I am considering. But that'll be the one I start with. So come come for the tales of treachery, stay for Jackbox games. That'll be at uh, starting at 10 a.m. Mountain Time 
this Saturday, January 4th. All right. And as for myself, when I'm not here, I am continuing to fall behind on posting board game reviews over at the Innkeeper's Table at www.innkeeperstable.com. I promise I am going to get that review of uh, of Hedgelord up because it's sitting there mocking me and I need to get it played and I need to get a review posted. And maybe I'll take it with me to New Year's Eve. I, we'll see. I don't know. I can't I, make any I've, I've heard the mocks. That That board game is quite scornful. Jordan, that was you. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> One of these days I'll convince on... you that inanimate objects are talking. Stop and then... blaming things on inanimate objects. <laughs> Once I get the, you to believe inanimate objects talk, that's when I can get my Nightblood replica and you'll allow it in the house. No, I won't allow you in the house. Uh, now, for those of you who do want to support the show, but you can't become patrons just yet for any reason, we would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a review. It'll really help us out. And even more helpful, if you know somebody who would be interested in, who is interested in the Cosmere and, you know, likes podcasts or doesn't know that podcasts are amazing, let them know that podcasts are amazing and that our podcast is amazing as well. In that order. I'm not, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. I'm just saying saying things as they come to my head as they as it goes calling it like i see it those are the words <laughs> anyway so we we've already done final thoughts so uh in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv actually hang on before do we have another update from brandon watch 2019 uh i did it 10 seconds ago and i had nothing let's see okay 10 seconds was an exaggeration Fairly no respected. still no update all oh, right. wait, no, never so, it is. No, never mind. My thing just boom. was taking long. We will end with Brandon yes. Watch 2019. Update 8. 9,900 words now. For the record, 52 minutes ago, he was at 9,000. So we now have a words per minute for Brandon. Someone do the math. Wow. Of in 50, So it was two minutes ago, 50, 50 minutes. He did 900 words. Did prayer and scriptures with the kids. And my wonderful wife put them to bed by herself so I could keep at the marathon don't worry he has a very nice wife he does don't worry (laughs) i'll spend more time with them the next two days tonight we're (laughs) finishing a book 15 seeds done so far and in two minutes it is already at 154 likes heck yes i'm seeing 177 Brandon Watch 2019, brought to you by the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies and Jordan. Yes. <laughs> Apparently he can do 18 words per minute, is what 900 divided by 15 is. And that's with, you know, like scriptures and prayer in the middle. So pretty impressive. Yeah. So yeah. He's, he's, he's doing pretty good work. Yeah. And yeah, he's he said 15 scenes and that's out of a total of 20 that he's trying to get down. So, hmm. Yes. It's happening. He's gonna finish. And November then we 17th. go straight Here to Dragon come. Steel and we steal the manuscript, and that's our next episode. <laughs> <laughs> you don't announce plans like that ahead. Oh, of time, oh, was know? this a or mistake, we're, Brandon? We're live. Uh, you know? That was a that was a joke. Oh crap! I Did I ever tell the story about when I was at Life, the Universe, and Everything, and uh, he showed up with a copy of Words of Radiance two weeks before it was released? I think you mentioned. Something I literally me. like I. I, I would swear that I saw a few people literally licking their chops. <laughs> and I leaned over to my friend and I said, he may not get out of this room alive. <laughs> yeah. well, the, the worst was I was there and like as one of the writers on a panel with him, I think it was uh, Sol- Saladin, if you're uh, familiar with him. He was like walking out. He's like, oh, don't forget your uh, your copy. Like, And this is like a full uh, same same conference. And like, but he announces this to the crowd that he, the guy had forgotten his copy. Apparently, he was giving oh, him no. one early. And it's just like, <laughs> Brandon, I think you just damned that man. He will he get a target. Uh-huh. Giant target. Yep, you have sentenced him to death. Anyway, thanks for being here with us for Brandon Watch 2019, and uh, you know it'll we'll keep watching in the, for the next couple hours because guys, I'm excited. Like I am, I I am on the hype train, just like cruising along. So, anyway, in addition to the 
the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Listeners can find our videos on YouTube or the audio versions of the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by doing a search for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us and contact us through Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. For the topic of our next episode, you are going to have to tune in to find out what we will be discussing. Keep an eye on our social media channels or just let it be a surprise and join in on the conversation yourself as we record our first episode of the new year on January 13th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. In the meantime, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's there's always always another another secret. secret.